So I'm thinking I might take some more garlic to stick in my uh, mashed potato for my shepherd's pie and my trangia. Wouldn't it too much, just a few and a bit of extra flavour. Hello and welcome. Well today I'm continuing on my trangia cooking series if you want to call it that. I'm doing a cottage pie today in a trangia. Again making an oven out of the actual pot set itself. The reason why I've chosen cottage pie is because I actually love cottage pie. Cottage pie is mainly a beef mince rather than where shepherd's pie is a lamb mince. I don't particularly get on with lamb so I'm sticking to beef which I quite like. This is a meal which is easily done. It's something which if I was on a vehicle trip or a campsite or even if I didn't mind carrying the weight I could carry the ingredients in. Likewise it doesn't have to be fresh. I could use dehydrated or dry ingredients as well. So there are options there. Also like I've done in previous videos the stuff I'm using could be used for other meals so it's, it's multi-purpose it's not just that's purely for that meal it can be used for other things. So I'm just trying to link lots of things in with you so you've got options. I'm all about options. Options are good. I hope you uh, get something from this and I'll see you in a minute when I'm going through the ingredients. Take care. So the ingredients I'm going to be using today is one onion. Some small or finely chopped up carrot and peas. Two or thereabouts street smoky bacon. Now we're in March in a minute so as I was walking the dog earlier there was some wild garlic so there's about three or four leaves just finely chopped up there which will go in the mashed potato. The mashed potato I'm using it's just the instant Idahoan. You can use potatoes as well, but I just thought for ease. And realistically, what I'd have on me is one of them. As per usual, I've pre-done it. So it'll just sit there, waiting to be done. One stock pot, or oxo cubes. Again, you decide how much you use. And I've got some steak. Now this is just to continue the other half of the steak mints which I used yesterday for lasagna. Again, it's about a takeaway box size, so no difference there. So pretty much they're all the ingredients I'm going to use. You could have a, you know, salt and pepper or Worcestershire sauce or anything else you want to add to it, but this is what I'm going to use today for the actual meal itself. As per usual, a fully bombed up stove. Mm. Yep. That's lit. I'm actually going to give it some time today because just there was a bit impatient but that's going let's give that a few minutes to uh, warm up the flame seems to be picking up I'm gonna chuck the pan on just put a little not too much a little dash of oil in there and the first thing I'm gonna fry up is the actual bacon. Give that a few minutes just to kind of sort yourself out. It all seems to be warming up nicely. Flames on its way so I'm going to chuck the bacon in now. I just find this gives a, a bit of a richer flavour. I love smoky food, smoky bacon anything like that
get a nice bit of colour to it now. So what I'm going to chuck in next is the carrots. Probably wondering why I've not chucked the onions in. Well, the carrots will probably take the longest, and I needed the uh, longest to cook, and I needed the bacon to kind of start crisping up, so it releases all the fats. So yeah, that's why I've done it this way. Now I'm going to chuck the onions in, or the onion. Oh, it smells good. Now I'm going to place in the mince. Try and do it such where I can get that paper off. And break it up, work it in. So I took this meat out of the fridge a little while before I was going to use it because every time you introduce a new ingredient into the pot it takes heat away. So I always try and make sure my ingredients are not freezing, freezing cold but warming up so again I don't use as much fuel, I don't lose too much heat but you can see there it's doing its thing. Smells great so far, and there's not really a lot there. What I can do to help speed things up a bit is put the lid on it to retain the heat.
Right, <coughs> let's take this off. It's been on for 10 minutes or so, I'd say. Proper steaming away. The carrots. I feel a bit soft. Yeah. So the carrots are proper softened up. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to take this off the heat now. Put the lid on it. Just for now while I'm doing the mashed potato. I'll show you guys as well. So there's there's the mash. There's the wild garlic leaf. Sprinkle it in. Just kind of mash it up. Again, it's always good to forage wild edibles. If you can add it to your to your meal, why not? So, just kind of tamp that down. And then just now I don't know if I mentioned it already this is the first time I'm cooking this in a Trangia so I've cooked this recipe out in the field before with other means a lot of my cooking to be honest with you is over fire if you look through kind of my YouTube history you'll see that I spend a lot of time out in the woods cooking over fires um, my Trangier experience was primarily when I was in the military on trips out in the mountains, things like expeditions, Duke and Vendenbrew Awards, Army Cadets, all that kind of stuff. Well, I thought there'd be some left over, but clearly not. So that's, that's alright. So I'm just going to again just give a bit of a, of a tamp, get all them spaces covered voids filled in just kind of get it all around smooth it off now I don't know if this will work but normally I do mash uh, this at home in the oven I kind of score it a little bit to try and get the little bits crispy there we go there you are that's quite a lot of food there so what I'm going to do now is get everything prepared like I did the other day there's my spaces might just open that out a little bit So there's my spaces. Probably used about half of one of these so far. Good, lit, windbreaker. We get like anything chaps, chapettes. If you're doing this, think about hot surfaces. You don't want to burn yourself. So I'm gonna plop that in. bit more level than it was yesterday then I'm going to put the lid on and just leave it it's now uh, 12 minutes past 4 and I'll just leave it now to do its own thing I'll give it every 10 minutes I'll check it just to make sure it's alright see how it goes so it's just been about 8 minutes I'll just have a look. Certainly, uh, 
hot. Let's take that out in a minute. Oh. And what I'll do, I'll stick the old simmering on. Just gonna leave it like that. Hot. Oh, it smells pretty good. A lot of heat coming through. Give it five more minutes and then I'll take it off. But that's that smells really good. Oh, I think it's been on there long enough. Just take it off. Oh. Oh. Let's move that out of the way. Whew. That is steaming. Put the train gear out. The finished result it is piping hot. It smells fantastic. There we go. Right. I'll try and get a nice portion of it. To show you, that's me. It's like everything when it's in a transier pot, it's always quite difficult to get out. Nothing's burnt. Smells really good. Starting to starting to drown our own saliva here. But you think about it, that's put that over there. And that's a, a fair size portion. So yeah, happy with that. Well, let's do the test. It looks good. It smells good. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. God, it's nuclear hot though. Woo. Burning me all the way down. Yeah, that's good. I don't need to say any more really. Give it a go yourself. You will not be disappointed. Let me know what you did, how you did it, what you added to it, um, how you felt, how, how you felt it went. It didn't have to be transgender, it could be anything, but yeah. I might have had uh, some smoked sausage this next time just for a change, but God. That is banging. Right, if you got this far, thank you very much. Um, always appreciate your feedback, always appreciate your views, I really do. I um, hope you're enjoying kind of chopping up the content a little bit, doing different things. And uh, well, see you in the next video. Take care.